Hello everyone, here we talk about uh, confidence interval. When we try to use the data from a sample to estimate the parameter of the population, we may choose the statistic calculated by sample data to simply represent the corresponding parameter of the population. This kind of estimate is called a point estimate. Point estimate is a single statistic determined from a sample that is used to estimate the corresponding population parameter. We have seen this kind of result when we were doing sampling distribution. If we randomly pick up a sample from a population, and we can get a sample mean from the sample data, and then we can use this sample mean to represent the population mean. This is an estimate. Similarly, we can also calculate proportion for the interested focus group in the sample and use this proportion to represent to be an estimate of corresponding population proportion. When we randomly pick up a simple sample, the sample mean or sample proportion changes with the random sample. We understand the sample mean or sample proportion could be quite close to the real population mean or population proportion, but also they could be far away from the population mean or population proportion. In that case, point estimate is simple and easy and logical, but most time they are not quite reliable. We have learned central limit theorem. For any random simple sample with sample size n taken from a population with average value mu and standard deviation sigma, regardless of the population's distribution, provided the sample size is sufficiently large, and then the sample mean x bar is distributed approximately normal, with the same mean as the population mean and the standard deviation related to population standard deviation divided by square root n. In this case, we can ask a question. What kind of the center interval around population mean would contain 95% of the possible random sample means, x bar? We can use a margin of error, me to represent the distance from center to the side of the interval. Then, the question being described as the center interval around population mean mu would be mu minus me to mu plus me. For any simple random sample, the sample mean fall in this center interval with 95% probability. If we want to make this happen, what kind of the center interval would be like? That means we are looking for ME, margin of error. We can do some equivalent move. So the event being described as x bar minus mu is in between negative margin of error and positive 
margin of error. And then we make the standard by dividing the sample mean standard deviation, which is a sigma divided by square root n. So the equivalent event being described by standard normal distribution random variable, that is z. From this standard normal distribution, we can find out the corresponding cutoff value for both sides, margin of error over the standard normal distribution for sample mean, the cutoff value being labeled as z star, simply can be found from normal standard distribution function in Excel reverse check, we can find critical value, about 1.96. In this function, we use 97.5%, which is cumulative probability required by this function, norm.s.inv. That means from the right side cutoff value, z star, whole left side of this cutoff value would be 97.5%. It directly comes from the original information required. 95% of the sample mean would fall in this center interval. Based on the symmetrical assumption, the whole left side of the cutoff value would be 97.5%. So we come out expression of the margin of error equals z star multiply the standard deviation for sample mean. Back to our original question, we come out in this center interval with margin of error 95% of the sample mean would fall in this range. It says 95% possible random sample mean are within this interval. If we build up the similar intervals from every possible random sample mean x bar, we can have different expressions. 95% of all these intervals would contain the population mean, mu. That is the foundation. We build up the confidence interval. For normal population with mu as average value, sigma is known as standard deviation. An interval developed from a random simple sample. If all the possible intervals of a given width were constructed like what we just showed, a percentage of these intervals known as confidence level, like 94% we just applied, is called confidence level. When we build up this interval, we answered 95% of possible this kind of interval would include true population mean. That also means if we randomly pick up just one of the possible intervals, this interval would have 95% of chance to be including the population mean. Generally, we use 1 minus alpha to represent the confidence level. The sample mean standard deviation is also called a standard error, expressed as from population standard deviation divided by square root n. Z star being noted as critical value. It comes from recognizing the cutoff value by identify center area 
or confidence level as one minus alpha. When confidence level is one minus alpha, outside would be alpha. Center interval takes one minus alpha percent of the possible sample mean. So outside would be alpha. In that case, each side would be half alpha. That's why we also use the sign to label the cutoff value z star as z with half alpha. Subscribe to indicate where it is cut off from the chart. That's how we show this confidence level. It takes the center area around zero. This is based on the standard normal distribution, either from standard normal distribution table or from Excel function. We can easily find some typical confidence level and corresponding critical values. If we have confidence level 80%, when we use the standard normal distribution function, we would apply cumulative probability left side 90%. When the confidence level is 90%, the cumulative whole left side probability would be 95%. Similarly, for 95% confidence level or 99% confidence level. So you can see what kind of information being required for the Excel function. Here give you the visually understanding about the potential situation. Say if we randomly pick up a sample from a population and we come out sample mean x1 bar. With this x1 bar, we can build the confidence interval based on 95% confidence level. And then we randomly pick up another simple sample, and we have another sample mean, x2 bar, and we can build another confidence interval. Similarly, we can get a third sample with third sample mean, and build up the third confidence interval. And another one, the fourth sample, the fourth sample mean, and the fourth confidence interval. With all these possible confidence intervals, what we can tell, 95% of the X bar values will fall within this interval with 1.96 sigma X bar this kind of standard error. So in that case, we can tell 95% of this kind of possible confidence interval will include true population mean mu. Here's an example. Assuming that the population distribution for credit card balances is normal with a population standard deviation equal to $400, construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval estimate for the population mean balance if a random sample of n is 100 accounts have a sample mean equal to $2,000. From this question, we have the population background about credit card balances. And we clearly noted the credit card balances as normal distribution with the standard deviation $400. Then we pick up the random sample with a size 100 accounts. And this sample give us the idea the mean is $2,000. So let's list all the information we have. And we also have the confidence level 95%. In that case, we can develop critical value 1.96. With all the information put in the confidence interval, what we have developed, 
we can come out to this confidence interval. $1921.60 and $1278.40. The meaning for this confidence interval is we can come out such conclusion with 95% confidence. We say the population mean is between $1921.60 and $2,078.40. $78.40 is the margin of error. With this example, we can think about uh, different approaches. May let us see some kind of trend. Let's look at the margin of error. Margin of error can also be found easily from an Excel function, confidence dot norm. This function would give us the margin of error directly. With the same confidence level, 95%, if we try different sample size, we can come out the following result. When we had 100 accounts, the sample size 100, we come out margin of error $78.00. 40 cents. If we increase the sample size to 200, we come out margin of error $55.44. If we increase the sample size to 400, we come down the margin of error $39.20. We can see with the sample size going up, the margin of error coming down. It means the bigger sample size would give more accurate estimation. The sample size is bigger, our confidence interval would be smaller. It means our answer would be more accurate. It is quite reasonable. Second example. The distribution of hours worked by students at a university is normally distributed. If the population standard deviation is known to be 5 hours, construct and interpret a 90% confidence interval estimate for the mean hours worked by all students at the university if a random sample of 64 students has the mean equal to 23 hours. Again, let's sort it out, our information provided. So we have a random sample with size 64. This sample gives us the mean 23 hours. For the population standard deviation being provided 5 hours, and the confidence level required 90%. In that case, we can get critical value 1.645 come from Excel function directly. And then we can calculate the confidence interval. With all the information in, we have the interval from 21.97 hours to 24.03 hours. How do we understand this? And this one with margin of error, 1.03 hours. The conclusion would be, with 90% confidence, we can say population mean is between 21.97 hours and 24.03 hours. We can point it out the expression of margin of error. We use the lowercase e to represent margin of error that come from the critical value multiply the standard deviation for sample mean. And then we can do a little bit of research based on the change of the confidence level. With 90% confidence level, we come out margin of error 1.03 hours. If we lift up our confidence level to 95%, our margin of error would be increased to 1.225 hours. 
when we lift up confidence level to ninety nine percent, the margin of error going up to one point six one hour. So we can see the trend. The confidence interval is wider when the confidence level is higher. The logic is also clear. If you try to answer a question with a higher confidence level, that means you will have to answer the confidence interval with a, a wider range. Summary: The conclusion we have: point estimates are subject to sampling error. For a given sample size, the percentage of possible confidence interval estimates that. Contain the true parameter is equal to confidence level. The margin of error is half the width of the confidence interval estimate. Increasing the confidence level increases the margin of error. Increasing the sample size decreases the margin of error. If we apply the similar idea to the population proportion. So we can have the similar structure to build up the confidence interval for population proportion. For a random sample, we can calculate sample proportion for a focused group based on the understanding of sampling distribution for the proportion, and we come out standard error or standard deviation for sample proportion being a random variable. If our population was not normal distributed, and we would require the large enough sample size to be able to have the normal population for the sample proportion, when we know the population proportion and the standard error being expressed by the population proportion, if we do not know the population proportion. We would use the estimate from a simple random sample. The p bar being applied in this formula, and would give us the estimate for the standard error of the sample proportion. With the similar idea, we build up the confidence interval for population proportion. And this come from the sampling distribution of the sample proportion. With the sample proportion, and we can build up this kind of confidence interval. And then, similarly, all this kind of possible confidence interval, we would expect you have one minus alpha this much percent. Include the correct true population proportion. Here's an example. A company is interested in estimating the proportion of the population who received a Miller coupon that will redeem it. A random sample of 100 individuals in the population has been selected. To receive the coupon, and 22 redeemed the coupon. Based on all this information, develop and interpret a 99% confidence interval estimate for the population proportion. So we have a sample with a size 100. From this random sample, we have 22% of the. Individuals who received the Miller coupon actually redeemed the coupon, and then we are required for confidence level ninety nine percent to build up the confidence interval. With ninety nine percent confidence level, we have critical value two point five seven six, and then we put the information in our formula we developed for. Population proportion, the confidence interval based on one random sample result, and we come out the interval about eleven 
point three three percent to thirty two point six seven percent. That means with ninety nine percent confidence, we can say the population proportion for those individuals who received the mailer coupon actually redeemed the coupon would be between. 11.33% and 32.67%. This is how we apply the confidence interval theory in the real problem.